Welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach from electricalexamcoach.com. And this is the question of the day. When using the optional method, what size overcurrent protection would you select for a load that is calculated at a total of 68,000 VA on a 120, 240 volt system? The options were A, 200 amp overcurrent protection, B, 100 amp overcurrent protection, C, 125 amp overcurrent protection, or D, 150 amp overcurrent protection. And the correct answer is a 150 amp OCPD. Let's take a look at why. First, I want us to start learning. Let's take a minute and pick apart the question. The first thing that I notice is optional method. So I'm not going to be using the standard method. I'm going to be using the optional method. Then I need to keep in mind what we're actually doing here. I've got to get down to the ability to be able to select the overcurrent protective device. And remember, that's just a big word for breaker or fuse. In this case, it's given me a calculated total of 68,000 VAs. And of course, I need to, and you'll find out here in a moment why, I need to know what the system voltage is. But one thing that's tough about these questions, and this is one that is very similar that at least one brand of big test maker likes to use on the actual exams is it doesn't tell you whether or not they have applied the demand factor yet at this portion in the calculation. I know for certain that for these style calculations, they have not performed it. So we're going to walk through those steps now. So the first code that I need to head to is 220.82B. We're going to do that on the next slide. Then it's going to lead me to select my overcurrent device at 240.6A, but in order to do that, I've got to be able to convert the 68,000 VA over to amps, but I must first apply the optional method demand factors. Let me show you how. When I'm applying the optional method demand factors, it works like this. It says that I have to take my first 10,000 VAs at 100%, and the remaining at 40%, like we've been doing throughout the program. So first I subtract my 10,000. I take my 68,000 minus the 10,000 that it wanted me to calculate at 100%, and that gives me a remainder of 58,000. Now I apply the 40% demand factor to the remainder. I take my 58,000, I multiply it by 0 0.40, and that gives me a new reduced load of 23,200 but I can't forget to add back in the original 10,000. I take my 23.2, I add back in my 10,000. That gives me a new reduced load of 33,200. But that is in watts or VAs. So what I've got to do is take those watts or VAs and I've got to then convert them over to amps. And this is where knowing the system voltage comes in. I would take that new reduced load, I would divide it by 240, this is split phase, single phase, and I would divide that by 240 and end up with 138.33 amps. Now we have learned on this channel, when you're in article 220 or 120 in the 2026, that you are able to drop that remaining 0.33, and if it's 0 0.50 and greater, you would actually round up one amp. I do want to note that this calculation on this video does not work for the 2026 EDC. They've changed these numbers a little bit, but everything 2023 and previous, this question is 100% accurate. Now let's take a look at how, what do we do now, now that we have the amps. Now that we have the amps, we're going to head over to table 240.6a. We take our known load of 138 amps, and we're allowed to choose the next size up standard breaker in this scenario. So I go down through here. Let me grab my laser pointer. I'm going to go to 125. That's not big enough. I fall somewhere in between 125 and 150, but the code allows me to choose the next size up, which in this case happens to be 150 amps. I am the electrical code coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it.